Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome to another video. In today's video, I'm going to talk about an interesting question. Variation of this has been asked actually in an Amazon interview. Okay. So we are given some uh, data about customer ID. So there are three customers here, one, two, three and the products they have purchased. For example, customer one has purchased Horlix, then customer two purchased Boost and so on. Okay. I've just adapted the products to the Indian audience, but yeah, it's something we usually drink regularly, right? During our childhood, Horlix, Boost, Bone Vita and all. So this is one table. And the second table basically has the products available in that store. So this store sells only three products, Horlix, Boost and Bone Vita. Okay. Now the question is, we have to find the customer who has purchased all the products available in the store. If you see, customer one has purchased Horlicks and Boost, but he has not purchased Bone Vita, right? Customer three has purchased Boost and again Boost, right? He has not purchased Horlicks or Bone Vita. Customer two has purchased Boost, Horlicks and Bone Vita, right? Basically all the three products which are available in the store as you see here, okay? So we want to show customer ID too because he is the one who has purchased all the products available in the store. How can we do that using SQL? So it's pretty straightforward. So what we can do is we can use customer, okay. And of course we want to see how many distinct products they have purchased, right? So I'll say count of distinct product, okay, from this table and then I will say group by customer, okay. So when, when we run this, what will happen? So we'll get this kind of information, right? And we know customer two has purchased all three products, okay. So how do we compare this value to all the products in the store? This is where the trick comes in. So after the group by, you can say having this, this value, right? Count of distinct product, okay? And you can say is equal to, what this number should be is equal to? It should be equal to the total number of distinct products available in the store, right? So basically the distinct product count from this table, okay? So I'll just copy it from here. I will say, I can put it in the next line. So the count of distinct product, right? That value should be equal to select count of distinct product, but from this product data table, because that will give us the number three, because there are three distinct products. And then this count of distinct, right? The values we have here for each customer, it will try to match that value to this. And then it will find out only customer two has three products, which matches with the distinct product count from the product data table. Okay. So when I run this, let's see what happens since we put it in the having condition. Now we will get basically, yeah, we have the, I mean, I just ran this query, right? Just to show you. Now let's run the full query. Now we see, right? Customer ID2 is only coming because he's the only person who has purchased the three products. Okay. So this is how you can get to the answer. And actually in the final query, you don't even need to put this, like since we are doing a group by, we can remove this and run it as well. Still it will work. Okay. For your sake of understanding, I put count distinct product, uh, but yeah, it's not even necessary. The most important thing is the condition. So the count distinct product per customer should match the count distinct product from the store data, which is the product table. Okay. Interesting question. Hope you enjoy this video. I'll see you again in another video. Till then, take care.